to pass in front of the whale, maybe 100 meters, something like that. Sometimes a bit more, a bit less, depends on what the animal lets us approach. The team gears up to get in the water. As the captain explains what will happen. The team gears up to get in the water. As the captain explains what will happen when they get into position. I will make a turn and I won't make the whole way. This way you have to swim. This is the animal. We are to this and you have to swim this. I can't leave the boat there, otherwise it will change without any doubt. So you will have to swim 20, 30 meters, depends, and wait for it to go straight to you. Sometimes they change direction, sometimes they don't. That's, that's the game. But the whale is gone almost as soon as the divers break the surface. Not a friendly one. We've just seen our first sperm whale. A couple of hundred meters off the boat. It seems to be a uh, solitary male, but it's, it's dived down again now, so we're, we're going to just wait around for maybe 20 minutes for it to come back up. The waiting game begins. Sperm whales can dive up to 10,000 feet and stay underwater for nearly an hour and a half. Let's see if it appears again, if we can do something with it. The vigil drags on until suddenly they get what they hope for. We just had a spotting of a whale over here. The blue? Yeah, blue. Straight ahead. Straight ahead. We're on our way. Monster Quest is in the Atlantic Ocean, searching for aggressive albino whales. The science team has focused its investigation on the sources for Herman Melville's Moby Dick. Thomas Beale in Natural History of the Sperm Whale describes uh, the sperm whale swimming horizontally but then sounding or descending to a deep depth. And Melville marked Beale's uh, description and in the margin he wrote that breaching may be the whale's act of defiance. It is here that Melville, who saw aggression in nearly everything sperm whales did, wrote the word monster. Pilot Sandy Lanham is a rare witness to the aggressive side of sperm whales, a behavior that even extends to others of its kind. Now, I thought maybe this was a game of chicken. Lanham is a pilot who spends hours flying over Baja, Mexico, working with sperm whale researchers. One day, while heading to Arizona and flying low over the Gulf of California, she saw something unusual. I was pretty high. wasn't doing a survey. I was returning home. And I saw, uh, at first, I thought I was looking at a blue whale. It was pretty far in front of me. And I used my binoculars and surprisingly found that they were not blue whales, um, they were sperm whales. I could tell that they were male sperm whales, so the shape of their head is different. And what they were doing is coming at one another. Using her GPS to estimate their speed, she noticed they were going about 11 miles an hour, about the top speed a creature of this size can reach. Now I thought maybe one animal would turn away, but it, it it was not the case. They continued on a path directly towards one another. As the whales charged, Lanham moved the plane down for a closer look. And when they reached one another, um, they ramped. I could see them actually hit um, head to head. And then their bodies overlapped a bit. Um, and each of them appeared to open their jaw. So what I was thinking was that as a toothed whale, um, that they were perhaps trying to lock jaws, or maybe they were trying to bite one another. They rolled a bit in the water together. 
shortly there, thereafter, they, um, they disappeared. They went down. I imagine after they hit, I was only, they were only on surface or slightly below the surface for uh, a few seconds. I have never seen that particular thing uh, before or since. Lanham suspects there was a good reason for the battle. I think it's significant that within um, a few miles of the ramming, um, there were a group of perhaps 60 female sperm whales with calves. Monster Quest is in the waters off the Azor Islands in pursuit of just such a whale. They want to see if it is a rare and possibly more aggressive albino sperm whale. We need to pass in front of it so we can leave the, the cameraman in front so we can, they can meet each other. Otherwise, there's no, no chance. Again, the whale dives before the team can get in position. Oh, God! The whales are extremely intelligent. And it's almost like he waits for us to get right in position and then dies and just flips us the tail, you know? The expedition team can't seem to get close. But like the relentless Captain Ahab, they will stop at nothing to find this monster. So the, the whales that we're seeing today are, are probably individuals, uh, lone males, and they're just, they're just not hanging out. They're not letting us get close at all. The team meets to discuss the expedition to this point. And the Man of War incident remains the biggest surprise of the trip. How'd you guys do? Did well, good. I found a jellyfish. <laughs> Look at uh, I can see. Yeah. What'd you come up with? Face. I was talking to some locals and went to see the guy at the watchtower that, that looks for the whales. Yeah. And I got some pretty good stories really from the locals about getting chewed and people losing their legs. From, really? From whale attacks, yeah. The captain gives them discouraging news. Yeah. It looks like there's not many sightings today. Uh, so it'll be choppy, it's not ideal conditions. That's what we have right now. The team decides to wait in the marina for a sighting. We got good looks at whales yesterday. We saw some, but the whales obviously have a high degree of intelligence because as soon as you come near it, they let you get close enough and then you feel like you're going to be able to film them and then they just, they go fluke up. Ocean's a terrible business partner. Monster Quest is searching the Atlantic Ocean off the coast of Portugal for the real Moby Dick. This elusive creature is the subject of terrifying encounters that go back generations. This scholar has uncovered Herman Melville's lost notes, which show how he created his vision the monstrous whale, Moby Dick. These fishermen were both nearly killed while trying to harpoon a whale. This man's boat was almost capsized by a sperm whale. And this woman witnessed two large bull sperm whales butting heads in a fierce battle over females. The team has targeted an area that has been known to have an elusive albino sperm whale. A new day brings a change in the weather and the team's outlook. The waves are real low and we have some sun. The sun allows the spotters to see the spouts, uh, the shoots coming out of the spouts. So it's going to allow us to have the best visibility and the best action that we've had. The team has found a pod of whales. Okay, camera 
is ready. Okay, let's go. The divers entered the water cautiously. Have this huge animal with a massive amount of weight going through the water, uh, a, a diver is no match for that. Pearson emerges from the sea a few minutes later. <sighs> Got it. Got it. They were really close. Really, really close. Two of them right in the frame. I think that's about as close as I want to get right there, you know. The whales turn out to be pilot whales. While not as large as sperm whales, pilot whales have been known to attack humans. When the team examines photos taken by Jeremy Holden, they get a better look at the sperm whale and realize just how close they came to the elusive creature. Steve Olson Smith's research shows that Herman Melville exaggerated many of the details of his book. Melville's books were at best a, a hybrid achievement of actual experience, factual information, and fiction. The author's creative license was meant to be artistic. Ultimately, Moby Dick is about the monstrosity of the world, the barbarity of creation. Melville appropriated passages from a natural history book describing sperm whales as ferocious creatures with a thirst for human blood, dismissing other accounts that did not support this view. Smith's research also turned up another startling fact. Melville discarded the original and very different ending to Moby Dick. In the published version of the book, the white whale sinks the Pequod and all hands go down with it with the exception of the narrator Ishmael who survives to tell the tale. But in this early rough sketch for a conclusion to the book, Melville seems to have visualized uh, whaling crews in whale boats towing the carcass of a slain whale away from the vortex created by their sinking ship, indicating that they were to lose their ship but get the whale. Melville changed his mind and allowed the whale to escape into the unknown. It was an ending he later saw come to life. In 1851, the ship Anne Alexander went down near the same spot where the Essex had sunk. Uh, this whale demolished two of its whale boats and then came back at the ship at high speed and rammed in its bow. And the sailors uh, had to evacuate. Uh, in their remaining whale boats uh, and watch their ship go down. And when Melville was told about this disaster by a friend of his, he responded, I wonder if my evil art has raised this monster. This Monster Quest expedition has uncovered some interesting evidence about the mystery of Moby Dick. The team documented witnesses who verified the sperm whale is aggressive when threatened. They also found evidence of an albino whale off the coast of Portugal. And the divers found the whale to be an intelligent and elusive animal to track. A fact Melville may have recognized when he changed the ending to his classic book. I'd say the idea that a sperm whale uses its head for a batting ram is an interesting idea and it obviously happened